Yeah. Nighttime, I see diamonds in the sky. Daytime, I see sunlight shining bright. If I'm alive, how can I not testify of your love, your love, your love? Yeah. Your love, your love, your love. Yeah. Hello, welcome to Truth Prevails. Today's episode, we're back in the What Does the Bible Really Teach book. We're still in chapter three, and we're going through um, what the Bible talked about the new heavens and the new earth. Um, they make the claim that when it when it says earth, it's talking about the people. So we put some of the scriptures that they talk about to the test. Um, this is highly debated. Um, is this world going to be this earth going to be recreated, or is it going to be destroyed? New earth. Um, even Christians debate on it and I don't know, you know, but the thing is, um, as a Jehovah witness, if you're a Jehovah witness, even your terminology on what you think, how you think you're going to have this earth and you have to do it yourself and the machinery is going to be gone and it's going to be all on you. You, if you're not born again, you're not righteous in God's eyes. You don't believe you're born again. So even if this earth was being created, you wouldn't be there. Um, and that's a serious problem because, you know, that's what your hope is. I'm going to be on this new earth, but only the righteous will dwell there. You know, Romans 3 tells us we're righteous by faith and you have to be born again from 1 John 2, 29. That tells you how you're, you're born again. If you're not born again, you won't be there. So, um. It's a good conversation, um, so just listen up. And, and I know many people don't support this new earth. And I'm not going to say, oh, you're wrong. You need to change your thinking if you don't think God's going to create a new earth. It might be that way, you know. There's good evidence for it and good evidence for it's not. But even as a Jehovah's Witness, you're wrong. So, but as a Christian, don't think I'm saying you're wrong. You need to change your thinking um, when you hear my viewpoint as I discuss in the video. So a new world is near. Paragraph 15. Bible promises there are new heavens and a new earth that we are awaiting, and in these righteousness is to dwell. Sometimes when the Bible talks about the earth, it is talking about the people who live on the earth. So the righteous new earth refers to all the people who obey God and are blessed by him. All right, so what is the new earth? Um, it was saying the righteous. This is uh, talking about the people who will live on the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So notice in, where is it? Genesis 11, 1. Mm -hmm. And now the whole earth used the same language in the same words. Yeah. So again, just showing how the Bible uses earth to describe people, not the actual. Because, you know, the earth is not actually speaking, it's the people on the earth. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I had a question on that. Yeah. Go um, ahead. When it says sometimes um, when the Bible talks about earth, it's talking about the people. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do you. How do you distinguish when it's talking about like the actual earth and when it's talking about the people? Well, we can we can tell from here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty basic because we know that when it's talking about people, so it's things that people do, Oops. they speak. Yeah. The earth doesn't have like a language. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you call volcanic eruptions speaking. The earth. The language is the people. So how can you tell? It's by what it's saying to us. It's kind of through the context of the scripture. So if you were to read that scripture, would you assume that scripture in eleven one? Would you assume that that was the physical earth? Or would you think that that was the people on the earth? I can see how it can be looked at um, both ways. Because it says, like, okay, now the whole earth say if he was passing by like another planet and so that earth all those people like 
the earth, they speak, there's many languages. So I can see where it can be, um, it can, it can kind of come about that way. But it's like, how do you, how do you, dis- how do you distinguish? Like, is there another, like, so another verse would, like, when it says the earth, um, like, because they had some other verses in there, the mm-hmm. second Peter. Yeah, so let's go. Second Peter 3.13. Yeah. You know, yeah, I was reading this chapter, and even that, um, at verse 7, before you get to 13, where it says, like, this present, the present heavens and earth by his soul, by his word are being reserved for fire, um, kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly godly men. Um, so when it says the heaven and the earth, mm-hmm. how, like, how do you distinguish that? So is it saying, is it always talking about the people? Mm, it's not always talking about the people, but we already know from from studying the Bible what God says about the earth, that the earth is going to stand till time indefinite. So he's not going to destroy the earth. So it's not going to be new. Not gonna be so it has to be something on the earth. So it's so we know it's the people. So okay, so um in So if you looked at um like just a contrast mm-hmm. in Isaiah forty five eighteen. Isaiah forty five. This would be talking about the the physical earth. And you can just get it kind of from the context of the the verse. Uh, Forty five. You said eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. This this scripture in Second Peter three thirteen where it talks about a new heavens and a new earth, based off of other scriptures that maybe you know about the earth. The one we just read. The earth is going to be here. He created it simply, not simply for nothing. He created it for a purpose, right? For it to be inhabited. And then we consider this scripture where it says that there are new heavens and a new earth. Does that mean that? God is going to create new heavens and a new earth. Does He need to do that in order for there to be a place where righteousness is? Does He need to destroy the actual physical earth in order for there to be a society of righteousness? Oh yeah, this one's corrupted. Yeah, you will have to. Yeah, but what about the physical earth? Does He need to to destroy the actual? Yeah, this one's corrupted. He should. He should just explode the the whole earth from the inside out. And right. make a new a new actual physical earth. Yeah, that's what um Second Peter three ten says. If we, if we can get that scripture. Mm-hmm. We said, but the day are you, are you there? So, so the earth and the works in it will be dis- will be exposed. Yeah. So yeah. we said it's going to be burned up. So if the earth is talking about the people, are the people going to be burned up? Is is the earth and its works will be burned up? Because it talks about the heavens. It says the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with the roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Um, and so it's like, what are the heavens referencing? Is that referencing something else, or what does yes. that reference? Um, that will all be answered. So you see, I had him backed in a corner when, you know, because as a Jehovah Witness and you as a Jehovah Witness, you have to be honest because you pick and choose scriptures. And then even in that scripture, you don't even um, interpret the whole scripture. You try to quote half of it, like Ecclesiastes 9.5, how do you say you're unconscious and that your soul sleep? You don't even interpret the whole verse. So... When, you know, when we had to call them out on this, their fallback answer is, it's all going to be answered. And I hope that in your conscience, I hope in his conscience he knew, and every Jehovah Witness that does this, that doesn't help the person trying to learn. And that shows that, instead of saying, I don't know, you're trying to come up with a fake answer. And, you know, that's not humble. And just say, I don't know. That's a good, let me get back to you. But even though that's, that's another funny thing when they say, well, I'll get back to you. They never do. That's yeah. like, because we look at verse 7, 
um, who's it, yeah, verse 7. Mm -hmm. It says, But the present heavens and earth by his word are being reserved for fire. Um, so that, that was like confusing because if I use that same kind of thinking, it's saying that the, when it says the earth, the people are being reserved for his fire. Mm -hmm. That that wouldn't make sense, right? So do you think that that God needs to create a new heavens? Because who who lives in the heavens? I would say he does. Yeah. He does, right? Mm -hmm. So is everything good there? Yeah. Everything's good there. So he doesn't need to actually create a new heaven. So that heavens must be symbolic. Just like that that word the earth may also be symbolic in that scripture, talking about something else which you do some research on and give you some information on. To the uh, seven is that earth is talking about something else. Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. But down in verse thirteen, mm -hmm. it's talking about a new earth that we are awaiting, you know, people. People mm -hmm. are awaiting according to his promise, so that way righteousness is to dwell there. So talking about a new society of people that are gonna have righteousness, it's gonna be a great place to live that we we can have hope in that's gonna be there. Jehovah doesn't need to make a new physical world, you know, a new planet Earth. He just needs to create a new site, oh sorry. So in order for that to happen. This is, so when it says but according to his promise, um, we are looking forward to a new heavens and a new earth. So when it says new earth does that mean he's going to create new people? Because if the earth means the people, yeah. is he going to create new people? My thought is just going to be us. And we're going to be there. Yeah. Yep. So why do we need a new earth? Because if, it'll if, be different from what it is today. So, that, so when it's, that's talking about the planet itself. It's, it's going to be different. Things will be different. Like we deal with... with um, what, what was a, a dangerous earth? Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. So many bad things are happening. But he's going to make it new in the sense that he's going to get rid of the people that do these things. So it'll be new in the fact that it's going to be like he intended it to be. Yeah, that that's why I would wonder what thinks, like distinguishes the the earth because I only saw like the one I was mm -hmm. looking up the the Greek and the Hebrew. I saw one word that meant like the whole the whole planet and the right. earth. That's why I was right. wondering how did, how well, are you, you distinguished of, in that because when, yeah, you, when it says that when you, like, when you exchange earth for people, you're saying he's gonna make new people. And when it says in which righteousness dwells, that's kind of like saying the same thing because if we know. At the, in that earth, the righteousness are going to dwell. So every time you see earth, you know, the righteousness are there. He says it twice. Well, he's going to He's going to make new people mm -hmm. where righteousness will dwell, where they'll be all good people. It won't be people hurting other people. Right? But does he make new people? He doesn't make new people. Well, no, just in the sense that our, our personalities will be different, the way that we act will be different, the society will be different. And then obviously that we're looking forward to the resurrection mm -hmm. in that new world as well. So there'll be new people and the fact that wickedness will be gone and then there'll be a new society of people. So when you're talking about the earth, when you talk about like maybe the governments of the earth, will those still be there in that new world? The governments yeah. that we have now, would they yes. be in the new oh no. No, they won't, right. So if you if you get rid of what's bad, yep and replace it with what's good. Yeah. And that's the end of this verse here. Righteousness is, is bound to dwell because who's going to be king of that new world? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So that goes back to that. So if Jesus is king, yeah. does he want righteousness to be on earth? Yes. He does. Yeah. And so we'll be under him. Righteousness is going to be here on the earth. It's going to be there. And so maybe that's a good, um, good thing for you to research as well as just kind of how the Bible speaks about earth and heavens, because there are some symbolic mm -hmm. meanings for those in certain verses. But we're talking about strictly the society of people that live, are going to live in that new world, and that they're going to have righteousness. It's going to be a nice place to live. Not like it is now, mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the people, more or less. Um, so, when, so there's nothing that you know that really distinguishes how to, how to read it. Like, because you would 
I would go to the like the Greek and then see what because there's many one thing can be there's many words that have different meanings. Mm-hmm. So like we, I would go back and look at that. What does that mean? And mean so there's nothing that like you've been like taught to. Um, you know what, Ryan? I'm gonna write that down and I'll and I can uh, and I can let you know. Yeah. About that. So as you hear their response, uh, let me know what you think. I think if you're a Jehovah Witness, it's important to look at the scriptures that they point out because I understand Genesis 11, but you know, then they start quoting scriptures and then using them out of context. And I think that's the problem. That causes a big problem because you're interpreting it wrong. And then you're choosing, you're, you're choosing when to interpret your understanding, your theology to scripture that don't even mean what you're saying. And like, probably no real witness actually went back and read this. So let me know if you had any experience dealing with this um, from actual witnesses, how you feel, how this discussion, how you dealt with it, um, and what you guys would have said, you know. I learned from you guys, so just share your thoughts, you know. I love to see the comments and, and hearing feedback and, and everything. So God bless until next time.